Hi there and welcome to the Dawn Show. Dawn sends Lamenti here. So today we're going to cover a range of topics here for you from remembering Martin Luther King Jr. of course to Governor Chris Christie and all his drama and scandals to divorcing your cell phone. First of course though Martin Luther King Jr. on this special day probably the most notable leader of the civil rights movement and of course his iconic I have a dream speech. Here to share their thoughts on MLK and much more are Natasha Warner, who's host of Table Talk, and Ken Dunnick, publisher of Jersey Man Magazine, best magazine in America, former Hello. Philadelphia Eagle. Thank you. How are you doing? Wonderful. Wonderful. So tell me, we're going to talk about football and the game last night and all that good stuff. Can't course. wait to get to that. I know. I know. <laughs> me either. <laughs> but, um, you know, Natasha, I'll start with you on Martin Luther King Day. Uh, what does this day mean to you? Well, I, I'm, I've always been a big believer that it's a day on, not day off. So I was already planning to do something with my daughter. She's off from school today. But just doing something, you know, to honor his legacy and what he believed in and uh, giving back to the community, absolutely. And for you, Ken? Well, just uh, a great memory of a special person, uh, a uniter, a healer. Uh, you know, I was doing some research on this topic the other day, and I was amazed to find out that he was only 39 years old when he was assassinated, which surprised me a little bit, but he certainly crammed a lot of uh, <laughs> substance into that 39 absolutely. years. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, in these divisive times, and we'll talk about Chris Christie too, but you think about politically, mm -hmm. um, how our nation, I think, is more divided than we've ever been. And for me, I always think to myself, I hope that on this day we remember we are all Americans mm -hmm. and what we really believe in. And I think that he's somebody to me who's a figure of a great American mm -hmm. who teaches us that to come together and look at what we can do when we come together as human beings. You know, I can relate race to my experiences as a football player in the locker room. And I had the opportunity to play with some great black players who I considered friends, Wilbert Montgomery, Harold Carmichael, Kelvin Bryant, and, and many others. And, you know, in the locker room, uh, the only color that mattered was the color of the jersey. We were all united in one cause, and it's a shame that society can't be a little bit more like that, you know, but there's, you know, a lot of other things going on in the real world that don't go on in a, uh, with a football team, but uh, certainly I think that philosophy uh, is, is a healthy one, and, you know, I consider those guys friends uh, mm -hmm. for life. Well, one of the things I was looking at today is when I wanted to ask what he would, how he would have felt about the whole LGBTQ um, community. I know I just butchered that, but um, <laughs> I was thinking, you know, would he be um, happy with what, how we treat our community, you know, all people in our communities? And I, I was thinking, yes, he would be proud of all the accomplishments that, that we've achieved, but, you know, driving here, my daughter and I were listening to his speech, the whole speech. And so I had to come up with, I don't think he would be proud of where we are today just because in his speech he, uh, he mentioned how, you know, he wanted his daughters to be judged by the content of their skin. Um, content I'm of their character. I'm just messing up. But, you know, the content of their character and not their skin. And I don't think that we're there. Um, especially he spoke about police brutality. And we heard about the story um, in Philadelphia last week where the young gentleman, or the, you know, the, the team of basketball players where the one uh, young man had his testicles crushed. And so we are still being judged by our skin. And it's, you know, not our content of our character and the images that are in the community of, of young black men. And um, I just think that we have not advanced so much so in that area. Do you think the media helps or hurts? Because I think Arms, in, in part, you know, because I have kids of all ages, right. I mean, from 30 to 7, because I've got the big kids and the little kids. So in some regards, I think, you know, kids nowadays, I don't see the racism with them right. that they're exposed to. I think kids are, I mean, and that's the future, that kids are so colorblind. And I think the, their media has helped with that. I, was you know, say, I think I see pockets. Um, you know, my daughter doesn't understand that because we don't live in an area, you know, where you talked about, you know, black girls and white girls can, uh, you know, come together and hold hands. That we have that experience in our community, so she wouldn't necessarily see that. But when you go into other areas, for example, with this, um, you know, situation that happened in North Philadelphia, mm -hmm. that pocket of, of, of that community, they are experiencing, you know, uh, racial discrimination based on the way they look and the images that are in the media. So the media, I definitely think harms us in terms of things that uh, we put out there, some of the thuggery um, images that face. So when I talk to my children, especially my little ones, you know, the, th the message that I have for them is you wear the uniform. So no matter if you are a prep student or you are a thug, you're going to still be judged the same way. And we mm -hmm. have a lot of work to do in that area. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I have four daughters and I 
tell my kids to judge everyone individually mm -hmm. on their own merit, re regardless of, of skin color. It was a different time when I was growing up. I mean, you know, I grew up in the time of Martin Luther King, so there were a lot of things um, uh, divisive in our society back then. But, you know, uh, you're right, there are, are a lot, uh, the kids today are much more accepting of, 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 of race mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and rightfully so, because you know, as a society and as, as humanity, we've, we've all got to get through this thing together. So I think that's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think when I was talking about the kids' media, the kids' shows and that sort of thing, but on the other hand, I think news, having come from a background of news for my entire adult life, I think news nowadays is more incendiary oh, than ever. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, and so, it, 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 you know, they used to say if it bleeds, it leads, right. but at least back in the day we had investigative units and we had, it just seems like we had more community perspective. Mm -hmm. And now it's, I know more and more people who say, I can't watch the news right. because mm -hmm. it doesn't reflect my community. Right. And Think I'm guilty of that. Yeah, I mean, look, look at the competitive nature of news and what they're trying to do. They're trying to attract ratings. So, the more incendiary thing that they can say is going to draw attention mm -hmm. to their their talent, right. and of course that's going to be uh, the talk on social media, and that's mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times, unfortunately, that's what they're going for. Yeah, well, speaking of that, we'll talk about Chris Christie, who's been in the headlines, and uh, also we'll talk a little sports. Of course, since we have Ken Donna here with the former Philadelphia Eagles, you played for the Giants. Who else were you with? Colts, Giants, and the Philadelphia Stars of the USFL. Don't forget the Stars, the All best right. team I ever played. <laughs> so we'll talk much more uh, when we come right back.